Is Martin Catlin around? Yes, Martin. Yes, my question's about the different ways that we can view uh, Formula One races. One of the good things uh, that you can do here at McLaren is that they allow you to go on their website and you can see all the telemetry, the radio and things um, as it happens. And are, are there any plans for the uh, other teams to follow suit? Yeah, we touched on this earlier on. It's a very data-rich sport, Formula One. There's an awful lot you can offer. But, Paul, what's your take on this one? Um, there are probably some commercial difficulties. There's a little bit of exclusivity in there that we may have to deal with. But uh, in terms of making more available, personally, I think it would be good for the sport to do so. But what about the whole issue of secrecy? I mean, you've obviously got, you've got five or eight blokes standing around the back of your car on the grid <laughs> making sure... <laughs> that nosy parkers like me can't see exactly what you've got going on. But I don't think that's unreasonable. I, I hope you're applauding the five blokes that stand at the back of each car and, and do a phenomenal job of uh, keeping the prying eyes away. Uh, equally, Paddy, I'm sure, would love to have a look at the back of our car. James occasion might be found somewhere near the back of our car as we might be found near the back of his. So it's a part of the sport that goes on. There's... You remember, we're in competition with one another, and we build prototype cars. And every time we go to a, a Grand Prix, that's our best statement of our technology and our knowledge at the time. Now, if we see something on James's car that we quite like, we are, uh, we're not sort of too proud to not copy it. And equally, I would say there are features that he's seen on ours he might like. If he chooses to use it, it's entirely his business. And... Um, I think that aspect of it is one we have to keep because we are a constructor championship. We race one another. I hope as a show that it's entertaining. If all the cars were sort of very open and you could see everything, then we almost lose the constructor title, to my mind. So a little bit of competitiveness and therefore a little bit of secrecy is hand in hand with our sport. What's the trade-off point, Paddy, between keeping the secrets that you have to keep and, and opening things up to the, to the fans? I, th I think it's, it's sort of, in some ways, amusing what Paul's guys do at the back of the car. The reality is that James and I know exactly what, what's going on behind that because we have photographs from other occasions. Uh, we all do this. Uh, I quite enjoy sending the odd photo to Paul after a race uh, <laughs> of his floor. <laughs> so, <coughs> Pointing uh, out the mistakes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> With a few suggestions, yeah. Um, so I actually think that the loser there is, is you guys. How many of you, just out of interest, would like to know more uh, from a technological point of view? I mean, how many of you wish there was less? Uh, yeah, interesting. So you'd all say that you're pretty interested in, you guys feel that technology is, is important and that information is important. I think, I think what's fantastic about the fan base of Formula One is, is that they are generally a, a very technical audience. I think that sets, sets you apart from... The, the, the sort of football fan, let's say. Um, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> you, you, you know, you understand and you want to understand technology, and I think that's great, and we need to make sure we keep feeding that. Brendan Goodjohn has a question about the hot-blown diffusers. The change of... It's not a change of rules, I've been told. It's a change of interpretations. It's very important to know the distinction. Hell yeah. Uh, obviously, you probably all spent many hours sat in the... Uh, wind tunnels and on the simulators check to see what the issues will be now that your hot blown diffusers are going for Silverstone. What issues have you had for optimising what you have and what risks are going to be for greater tyre degradation and issues like that? I don't think it will particularly change tyre degradation. I don't think it's going to be the magnitude of change that is perhaps being forecast in some areas. And uh, as long as we're still on top, I don't mind. <laughs> Can you give us some sort of sense of context, James? Of, I mean, what, what is going to be, how much, what are we talking about in terms of lap time? Just generally across the field, not specifically your team, but give me an idea of how much of a difference this is going to make. OK, we're, we're all a bit coy with one another about the power of these devices, um, and it will vary from team to team. And uh, I won't give you our number, but to, I'll give you a sense of it. Um, if you imagine that these things might be worth, say, 0.8 of a second-ish, um, 
compared with having no blown diffuser. And you're broadly going down to about half of the previous authority of it. So by it's still got plenty of blowing going on because you've still got an engine running and that exhaust is still going right into your floor. But we're not able to optimize the use of the engine to make it also efficient as a pump when we're on partial throttle. That was the, the, uh, the new interpretation that's being applied. Well, that's a perfect moment to stop and to say thank you very much to these three gentlemen, Paddy Lowe, James Allison, and Paul Manahan, the engineers. Thank you.